going to be, a, a, I think, a fairly chunky video where we're going to talk a lot about Feynman diagrams. And what I want to do is really tackle um, how we interpret Feynman diagrams. And there's a key point to that, which is going to be essential in our understanding about time. Okay, so let's, let's have a look here. Now, this is a nice diagram because um, it tells us quite clearly what's going on here. We've got time on the y-axis and position on the x-axis. And what you should be aware about Feynman diagrams is that um, the, the time has been turned into kind of a spatial dimension. So normally y and x would be 2D spatial dim dimensions. In this case, y represents time. Now, the way we might read this diagram is as follows. Okay, all right. It's an interaction between two electrons. Okay, and we can think of events. So the first event would be our first incident electron, okay, emits a photon. And then the second one absorbs that photon, okay? Um, and that's kind of nice and easy to, to follow. We've got the result of those two events being that they change their paths. Okay, now actually, who um, emits what, who absorbs what is up to debate. But the main idea here is that we're trying to understand the repulsion or the action of the electromagnetic force through the action of a virtual photon. And I find that students are fairly happy with this one. It's quite a good example because it's a common one that we know, um, which is simply that we, I, we know that uh, things with the same charge will repel each other. Okay, how do we explain that with a Feynman diagram? I'm going to dig into this one now, okay? And I'm going to imagine that we had the same picture, but we didn't have the helpful textbook for us. The textbook didn't tell us where time is. The problem we have then in trying to kind of tell this story in the sequence of events is identifying where time is and how time is increasing. Well, um, for this, we've got a, sort of a bit of a trick. What we do in this is we identify the arrows belonging to any particles. And in this case, I really mean the fermions. No anti-fermions, okay? Don't worry about bosons right now. We'll just worry about the fermions. So in this case, we've got our electrons. You notice we've got kind of four electrons. You might think you don't really, you might really not, not know what's going on here. Okay, we've got our electrons here, four fermion symbols there. What the goodness is going on? And what we do is we identify um, their directions. And we think, well, all our, my fermions, they're moving either upright or up left. You notice there's a common direction, which is up. No fermions here are moving down. All right, well, it turns out that that upward direction is the key to this. This diagram, as we know from the previous slide, is showing time increasing on the y-axis. And the hint towards that is the direction of those fermions. They all move up. None of them move down. Okay, and so that arrow is the um, direction of increasing time. Now, um, We've seen, the, uh, we, we've seen this already, but I thought this, the nice thing about this is it allows us to identify different uh, points of time and the, the sort of status, okay? So what we could do is we could draw a green line there. This would represent an early time, a sort of low value of T, if you like. Okay, and we think about what is existing at this point. Well, we've just got our two electrons existing um, in some position, okay? As time gets bigger, that position, that, uh, those electrons get closer together. Okay, and eventually we get so point that we it's so quickly together that we have the emission of this photon. Along the blue line is a time point, it's a very short time interval, but it's a time point during the time interval whereby both the electrons exist and also this virtual photon exists as well. After that, they start to move apart. Now, really what I'm trying to do here is just identify the, the sort of the situation before and after each of these events that we've identified, the emission and absorption of the photon. If we then look at the next picture, this is another representation of the same thing. Okay. However, it's essentially rotated from that top bit, um, that top image. Well, this is key because we can represent time as going in the other direction as well. Okay. Again, let's have a look here. Our electrons are both are all moving to the right. Okay, some are moving down to the right, some are moving up to the right. Well, that means that the time, the increasing time here, is going to be to the right. 
Okay, and again, we can do the same thing with our time intervals. Okay, these lines, as we move from left to right, are representing the status, the situation at um, certain time frames throughout our process. Okay, and it shows you what's existing concurrently. Okay, at this point, I'm going to stop recording. I think this kind of thing needs a little bit of a breather. Once you've, once you've digested this, watch the next video, okay, which is looking at a harder interaction. And I think this one will be, um, this will hopefully clear a lot of things up. If you are unclear, please let me know.